Welcome everyone to a Domo Lunch and Learn. We're so excited to provide these every Tuesday and Thursday. And I am also privileged and humbled to have Dan Britton back on the Lunch and Learn, the Domo Technical Solutions Manager here uh, on our teams. Super excited to get started with data set alerts. But before I do, I would be remiss if I didn't promote Domo Palooza, multiplying your impact, our free customer event. Scan the QR code above. Or if you want to check out our community forums down below, QR code below will get you there as well. We'll have all kinds of links to promote during the session. If you have any questions or you just want to say, hey, I'm here, I'm excited to be joining. Dan is an amazing technical solutions manager. Any type of uh, accolades or comments or suggestions or questions, throw those into the live chat over to the right-hand side or down below, depending on how you have your window sized. Uh, on YouTube or on our community forum. So greatly appreciate everybody joining us. Thank you again to Dan for being a part of that. And today, Dan, we're going to dive into data set alerts is what I've been told. Yes. Yep. That's the plan. Yeah. So excited. So I have a KB article to share. We have a little knowledge base article that we'll share during the session. I'm going to turn it over to Dan. I'm going to let him dive right in. Uh, but again, Dan, thank you for joining the show. We really appreciate you being on the Lunch and Learn. Yep. Thanks for having me. Hey y'all, um, happy Thursday. Um, today I wanted to do, actually I'm gonna set the stage pretty quickly and then it's mostly just gonna be some live demo. Um, so the idea uh, uh, here that we're gonna talk about is how can I engage my audience, whoever my target audience is, how can I engage my audience using Domo Alerts? So here's the use case, this hypothetical use case we're gonna think through. So imagine um, Acme Co has a, a club of rock climber enthusiasts, right? And within the club, they've got groups for, for various skill levels or interests, right? And each of those groups is organizing meetups that are, that are again, geared toward those interests, right? Um, the use case or the, the requirement then is we want to send reminders to the members of each of those groups um, as there is a meetup event sort of upcoming, right? And we want to send those reminders not when the event is scheduled, that is to say, not when it's not when we create the event, the event. We want to send the reminder, you know, maybe a day or two up, you know, before the event, so that so the members of the club get the reminder in their email, oh yeah, there's that meetup event I want to go to in a couple of days, right? When we send that reminder, we don't want to send um, you know some generic information, we want to include some details about the meetup, right? So um, date and time, location, maybe a description. And I want to create all of this stuff, or I want to create this infrastructure. And then I want to allow uh, members of the club to subscribe to these reminders according to their own interests, right? So um, I'm maybe I'm a, a beginner climber, and so I want to subscribe to the, uh, the reminders for beginners. So that's, that's kind of setting the stage. Um, here's maybe the solution architect, well, not maybe. This is the solution architecture we're going to use. There are a couple of different ways that we could probably go about doing this. Um, I decided on this for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to do this using entirely core Domo product. There's um, no, no uh, you know, premium features here. There are no premium apps or anything like this. This solution is gonna be built entirely on data flows and data set alerts. So let's talk about very quickly how, um, how we're going to accomplish this. So obviously we need to have the ability to create a new event, right? Schedule an, an event for some time in the future. I'm not really going to demonstrate that part of it. I, for, the, for the demo today, I'm literally just using a web form. So uh, nothing particularly fancy, but it's good enough for our, for our conversation today. So we need to be able to schedule new events, create new events. Then we need to have some process that's going to be looking at the schedule of events and identify when a when an event is sort of near upcoming, right? And we can define what what coming soon might mean. Um, for today, maybe we'll pick we'll pick uh, two days, forty eight hours in advance. So we've got some process that's going to be analyzing the schedule to see when do I have an event coming up in the next day or two. Then we need to take that information. We need to write it out. We need to write it to a Domo data set, and then, um, and then we'll have the alert trigger based on that event, okay? So that's all the, that's all the groundwork I'm, gonna, I'm going to lay, and I'd like now to just jump into the live demo. 
So we're going to build a data flow. We're going to ingest the schedule. We're going to apply some logic and some filters. Um, I'm going to show you kind of an interesting little workaround. Um, I'll get into more detail here, but a workaround that will force the data flow to run even if the input data hasn't changed. I'll talk about that in more detail when we get there. And then we're going to set up the alerts themselves. So we'll filter the alerts for a specific interest group. We'll talk about how to configure the alert to trigger when new when a new record is is created. Um, and then we'll talk about how we can configure the alert message itself. OK, cool. That's enough background. We're just going to dive right into the demo now. Let me just set my slides off to the side. OK, so here is my here's my schedule of, of upcoming events and I should say past events. Right. So um, there was a New Year's Day event that happened at the Rock Gym. And you can see just quickly the way this data is structured. I've got one record per climber class. So that's my interest group. Right. One record per climber class per date and time. That is to say here you can see there are two records for January 1st at 9 p.m. One of those is for top rope advanced, and the other is for sport climbers. Okay. The point is that um, an event, a single, a single meetup event, is defined by a date and time, and a climber class. Okay. And each of these rows then represents a distinct event. Here is the January first event for the top rope climber or top rope advanced climbers. Row two is the January 1st event for the sport climbers. OK, it's going to be important to understand. I'll call it the, the granularity of this data as we go through this demo. But nothing particularly fancy here. We've got a date and time, a location, a description, and then the climber class for the interest group. So this is our this is our input data. And of course, this is a web form and and the, the people that are sort of managing the club would be scheduling additional meetup events into the future, right? You can see right now we're scheduled out through middle of June. All right, so let's talk about how we can accomplish our, our requirement. Again, what we want to do, we want to send an alert um, a couple of days before an event is scheduled to start so that our people know that oh, they can be reminded, ah, yes, there's that event I want to go to. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And we're going to open this up in Magic ETL. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to add a formula tile. We're going to do two things in this add formula tile. First thing I want to do, first thing I want to do is this particular Domo instance happens to be configured in UTC. Um, however, all the members of the group are in US Mountain Time. In order to display the, the actual date and time in US Mountain Time, when this alert goes out, I need to do a time zone conversion here. So I'm going to create a new column. And I'm going to call it date and time, mountain time. And I'm going to use the convert TZ function. So this function takes as an input the date and time. And the, uh, the time zone that I'm converting from, which is UTC, and then the time zone I'm converting to. Okay. So the result of this then is going to be the date and time converted from UTC to America Denver, which is the, the name of mountain time. All right, that's the first thing we want to do. The second thing we want to do is we want to calculate the number of hours until this event, any event, is scheduled to start. Okay, There's a, there are a number of different ways we could do this. Um, we could use like the, the date diff function. For today's demo, I'm going to show you how to use the epic millis command or uh, function. Can't spell or type today. Epic millis, the way this works, it takes as an input a date and time, and it returns the number of milliseconds from January 1st, 1970 until this date and time. Okay. So it, this is basically elapsed time since January 1st, 1970. Um, don't ask me why the epic is defined as starting on January 1st, 1970. I think it was a relatively arbitrary decision. The people that did it, they just needed some point in time basically to represent zero. And January 1st, 1970 is what they picked. Okay. So hey, Dan. 
Sorry, yeah. I don't mean to. I don't mean to stop you in the middle of this, but we did have a question come through on on YouTube. I want to make sure we get to it. Our good friend Scott Thompson is joining us. Uh, has hey, asked, Scott. does does that mean that the date time entered into the web form has to be in UTC? Yes. So, Domo Domo always stores data in UTC. Always stores. Uh, Scott, you're gonna you're gonna drag me down this time zone. <laughs> you're gonna drag <laughs> me down this time zone rabbit hole. It can be a little. Admittedly, it can be a little bit confusing. Domo in the back end stores data in UTC time. Okay. Depending on where you're looking in the product, typically uh, Domo is going to show you that time converted from UTC to whatever time zone your Domo instance is configured in. So if you're an admin, you can go to the admin settings uh, in company settings. And one of the settings there is the time zone of the Domo instance, right? This particular Domo instance is in UTC. That means that there is no conversion automatically happening in the visualization layer from UTC where the data is stored to the time zone of the instance. Because again, the time zone of the instance here is UTC. Um, when, it, when you're entering data into Domo or when, when you are ingesting data into Domo, um, say via workbench or a connector, typically best practice is going to be ingest that data in UTC time. Okay, that way Domo stores it in UTC time and all of the time zone conversions in the visual layer of Domo happen automatically. Awesome. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, great, great question, Scott. Keep them coming as the session's moving forward. Thank you, thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Thanks for stopping me. Okay, so this is the this is the duration of time um, from January first, nineteen seventy, until my event is scheduled to start. And I can I can get a little clever here, and I can do the same formula or the same function now on current timestamp. So this is the amount of time duration from January 1st, 1970 until right now, right? And if I subtract those two, one from the other, now this is the amount of time between now and when my event is scheduled to start in milliseconds, okay? So now we need to do a little math. And so here's, here is current time until scheduled start time in milliseconds. I can divide by a thousand, now it's now it's time until start in seconds, and I can divide by 60. Now we have time till start in minutes, and I can divide by 60 again, and now I've got time till start in hours, decimal hours, okay? So if we were to run a preview on this quickly, we would be able to see that calculation happening. Okay. And of course, it's going to, I'm sort of tempting the wrath of, of uh, the live demo gods here, right? But we can see, so for events in the past, you can see hours until start is negative. That's what we expect. But for my next upcoming event, which is this Saturday, you can see we're, we're just under 48 hours until that event is scheduled to start. Cool. So now we know when are these events scheduled to start relative to current time. So I'm going to now take the next step, which is I'm only interested in the events that are upcoming soon and or the events that have already completed. So they're already in the past. And so now we can add a filter and I'm just going to say hours until start is less than or equal to 48. So arbitrary, right? I decided I want these alerts to go out 48 hours before the scheduled start time. And now I'm going to grab a, so, whoops, a select columns tile because I'm not actually interested in, I don't need to keep that hours until start. I really just calculated that for the purposes of filtering. I don't need that anymore. So I'll just drop that out. And now that's really it. So I'm gonna output that result to let's call it um, coming soon. Say we'll call it events coming soon. And I oftentimes like to name my data flows the same as the output data set, so we'll do that. All right, so now let's talk about scheduling. We've got our data flow. Uh, it's doing what I need it to do. It's going to calculate the start time in, in mountain time, so it's going to convert that time zone for me. I'm also doing the math to know how far into the future is this event scheduled, and then I'm filtering on that result, right? Um, but part of what we want, part, part of what we're trying to accomplish here is we want this data flow to be checking the schedule 
you know, fairly frequently, at least once a day, but probably more than once a day, maybe, you know, once every hour or something like that. So let's take a look at scheduling. I can come here to the settings. Right now, by default, the data flow is scheduled to run only manually, but I want to run it on a schedule. And you can see I've got all kinds of options here. I want to run it more than once a day, let's say every hour, sure, on the 46th minute. That looks great. And I'll go ahead and apply. And let's save that. Okay, so now one nuance to understand about the way Domo data flows work. So I've told Domo, hey, run this data flow once every hour, right? And it will, it will kick off. But the very first thing it's going to do, the data flow is going to ask the question, has the input data changed at all? If the input data has not changed at all, then the, dom then the data flow is going to say, well, if the input data hasn't changed, then that means I don't need to run again, right? I don't need to reprocess data if it hasn't changed at all. Problem is, that's kind of a bad assumption here. Because our logic, if you remember, is based on the current timestamp, right? This current timestamp has everything to do with now, right? The time that this data flow is running. So in order for this to work, we need this data flow to run, even though the input data set hasn't changed at all, OK? So there's kind of a funny little, a funny little workaround we can use for this. What, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab another data set that I know is going to update very frequently. And I know it's going to update very frequently because I created it to do so. <laughs> so I've got this, I've got, I've called it, in fact, I called it data flow trigger. It's, um, it is a, it, it is a data set that was created using the JSON easy connector. We're not going to get into this right now. Point of the JSON easy connector is basically you can hard code some data and you can tell it to run as frequently as you want. I have this scheduled to run every 15 minutes. And so like the actual data isn't going to be changing, but the batch ID and batch last run timestamp will change. So these will be updated every 15 minutes. So by including this input in the data flow, I've tricked the data flow because, ah, look, the input data is changing. Therefore, the data flow will, will um, agree to run on every hour as I've told it to. OK, I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit of a workaround. The other thing to understand here is that every every input to a data flow must be connected to an output. Right. So if I tried if I tried to save this right now, I could save it, but it would tell me uh, it's not in a runnable state because this is not connected to an output. So to fix that, I'm just going to join. I'm just going to join this really you know dummy data into my actual data. And I'm going to do that in such a way that it doesn't it doesn't affect the output data set at all. I just need just to meet the requirements of the magic ETL data flow. I have to connect it to an output. So I'll make this a left join and I'm going to join on batch last run, which is a timestamp. Uh, I'm going to join that to date and time, which is also a timestamp. Again, this is just this is just uh, me meeting the requirements of magic ETL. I don't need the name. That's just junk data. I don't actually need the batch ID or the batch last run. Again, the only purpose for this was so that, uh, so that the data flow sees the input data set is changing. Therefore, I will run. So we'll save that. And actually, let's go ahead and run it now. OK, so we'll give this just a, a couple of seconds to run. And then we will set up our, uh, our alert. So let's review quickly what we've done. We built our data flow. We ingested the schedule meetups data. We've got that logic and filter in, in place to only filter for um, past or coming soon events. And then we've got this JSON easy um, kind of workaround to make sure that the data flow runs every hour as I want it to. And now we're ready to move on to alerts. So here's our output data. And if we take a quick look here, you can see, oh, <laughs> shoot, uh, the live demo. I got bit by the live demo. Excuse me. I made a mistake here. I didn't want to uh, keep only the hours until start. Of course, I wanted to keep everything except the hours until start. Maybe you can drop in the chat all the times you've made silly mistakes while doing live streams. <laughs> Just kidding. Give this one more second to run. That should fix it. OK, so here is our data. 
refresh. Here is our data. Okay, so we've got our date and time, location, description, climber class, and here we've got the date and time in mountain time. Okay, and we're ready to create our alert. So let's go to alerts and we'll do new alert. And for this particular alert, this is going to be specific to the uh, top rope beginners. Okay, so um, join us for top rope beginners meetup. The logic I'm going to use here is anytime a row is added. So anytime there's a new row that shows up in that data set, this alert is going to trigger. Okay. I'm going to add a filter because I don't want anytime any row is added. I only want anytime a row for top rope beginners is added. Because again, this particular alert is just for the top rope beginners. Now, at the very beginning of this discussion, we talked about um, the granularity of the data. And I told you that my data, my schedule is defined as, or events are defined as um, per climber class, per date and time, right? That's how we're going to uniquely identify an event. And that's what we're being asked to define here. So Domo guessed that date and time is unique, and that's part of it. I need to also provide the climber class. This has everything to do with, again, just the nature of my data. So now, the way this will work, anytime this data set updates, right, as you see here, anytime this data set updates, this alert will be evaluated. If the alert finds that there was a new row added where climber class equals top rope beginners, then it will trigger this alert, okay? So let's go next, and here's where we can build our message. This is one of the things I like about data set alerts relative to, say, card alerts, is I can include individual pieces of information from a row of data in the alert itself, right? So um, you can see here that, again, Domo pre-populated my alert message with what it thought I might be interested in. Turns out, again, we talked about the time zone thing. I don't want to show the date and time in UTC. Instead, I want to show the date and time in mountain time, right? I could include information about the climber class, but I don't really want to because, again, this alert is specifically for the top rope beginners class, right? So I'll get rid of that. But I definitely want the location, and I definitely want the description. I could give the alert a, a different name, right? Or I could I could include a different header. Um, it's going to populate with the alert name automatically. That looks good to me. And then on these data set alerts, there's also a footer. Um, the footer is what would say maybe the number of, of new rows that were added. For this use case, I really expect that the number of new rows to be added at any given time is going to be one. So I'm not really interested in that footer. One other thing I want to point out with uh, data set alerts is we've got um, the ability to uh, make the alert do something else, right? So for example, we could take the information from the alert and write it to a webhook. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to skip over it, but I just want to make sure that you're aware that functionality exists. And here I can subscribe somebody to it, right? So maybe I already know that I've got 15 people that are, are that want to be part of my top row beginners group, and so I could subscribe them right here. I'm not going to do that because I want to show you the other option, which is if I share this data set with all the members of my of my group, or if I share this data set with all the members of the company and say, hey, we just started this new rock climbing group, subscribe to these alerts and you'll automatically receive an email notification for upcoming events, right? They can come to this data set and they can click on it and they can say, ah, I would like to, I would like to subscribe to this alert, okay? So we're getting close on time, I think, but let me just show you just in the slides what this would have looked like if we if we triggered the alert right now. So this is this is what it looks like. Um, you can see we've got the header here. We've got the date and time in mountain time. We've got a location, and then we've got a description. And so very easily, my target audience, the members of my group, are able to get all the information they need about our next upcoming event, right? So this is how we can engage with our audience using core Domo functionality, Domo's, uh, Domo's data flows, and data set alerts. That's all I've got. If there are any questions coming in in the chat, I'd love to I'd love to answer them or 
or uh, anything else that you'd like to talk about? That's all the yeah, Dan, I've got. Yeah, that's amazing. We don't have anything coming in immediately, but we'll stick around for the next couple of minutes, see if anybody has any questions for Dan. Obviously, appreciate his time here. Um, these are, are great sessions, these lunch and learn sessions. I think I learn just about as much as anyone watching probably uh, for the first time seeing uh, things like data set alerts here. We've put the KB article in the chat. So if you're watching on demand, make sure to check that out. Obviously, uh, our knowledge base teams, our support teams spend a lot of time putting those together. So great resource for them there as well. Uh, if you have any other additional questions, like say you're watching us on demand, you're not technically watching us live, and you're like, oh, I have more questions. Uh, be sure to reach out to, to me. I'm just eddie.small at domo.com um, or anybody else on your support teams or uh, run over to the community. Boy, what a shameless plug and transition there for our community, right? <laughs> right, Dan? Uh, that's down below. So check out the community. Somebody will always be there to help you. We did have one more comment coming through. Scott, always with the questions here. We appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for joining. Are there any premium features that add functionality? to these alerts that we can talk about? Yeah, good question. There are not premium free, like premium sort of add-ons to the alert functionality, but if this, some, if this is something that you're interested in where you're thinking, oh boy, something like that would maybe really be helpful. Um, we do have the Domo Campaigns app. The Domo Campaigns app, which is premium, um, can do everything that I showed you that an alert can do and then a lot more, right? So instead of having I showed you what the alert email will, will, will look like. It's mostly just plain text, right? With the campaigns app, you can you can be uh, much more prescriptive in terms of how that email should look. Um, you can define uh, you can define your distribution list and the content that should be set sent to them. Um, so again, not not premium add-ons for alerts, but there is this premium campaigns app feature or or, or application that takes some of these same ideas kind of to the next level. Awesome. If anybody else is curious, uh, these shirts are standard issue at Domo. Oh, Dan's shoot. wearing the white version. I'm wearing the pink version. Um, and I, I chose the long sleeve option. So just in case anybody else is curious, I just noticed that we are a little bit matchy today. Eddie, so. Eddie are the are the beards also standard issue, I wonder? The, sometimes. I go short with mine. You're a little bit longer, which is okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just can't do it. Anything over anything over what I've got currently, it's just it's a non-starter. It immediately gets tripped. All right. Well, hey, Dan, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We'll let you get on with your day. If anybody else has any additional questions, again, reach out uh, to the dojo. And again, sign up for uh, Doma Palooza if you haven't already and let all your friends and family know. Uh, subscribe, like, do all the things. We're super excited to continue to provide these every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Dan, thanks again. Appreciate it. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, y'all. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.